good morning because it is good and in our native um land we would say buenos dias because it is a good day if you started off right you will have the right um attitude uh, that always determines how your day will be if you get off that bed um not right then you're not gonna be right i like to get up early because i'm a moper and i like to get um i like to have that time to mope and it makes me feel better <laughs> instead of feeling like i'm being rushed i just feel like the camera's crooked Okay, so I wanted to talk to you about this dream that I had, and I have to find it now, and I really feel that it was a prophetic dream. It's been about a few days, and um, I'll tell you what day it was, and I've just been sitting on it, just thinking, praying, asking God. Um, making sure that this dream is coming out of the prophetic realm and not a place because we can have three different ways dreams can come forth and um, you just have to kind of like discern where is this dream coming from and that night I had two dreams this dream that I'm about to tell you was what people probably would consider a night terror i was woken up from my dream um and it was okay so april 13th april 13th so that would make it i guess sunday night going into april so april 13th i was woken from my sleep with this first dream i had two dreams and the first dream was like i said before a night terror i saw something in my dream that literally had my heart racing out of my chest and so i had to pull myself out of the dream so that i can grasp my breath and this is why I think I waited a while and kind of went through things to make sure that um, that I wasn't, you know, that it wasn't a soul dream, but actually a prophetic dream. So the dream goes like this. I was in a teenager's body. I was a girl in a teenager's body and I was with my friend. It was dark and we were going to the park to just hang out with our friends and so when we got to the park um we got to the park and our friends were there and we finally met up with them we're just hanging out we weren't like drinking or there was no drugs or anything while we were at the park so this is not the first time let me just emphasize this this is not the first time I've had dreams where I'm in someone else's body. And I actually feel the realisticness of it. Now, you can ask God about that, but, you know, I, I know that when I experience these dreams, I'm experiencing the fullness of it as, as if I was this person. So, um, so we're at the park, we're hanging out, all of a sudden, um, one of our friends who had to be about 18 maybe 17 because that's the age group we were in his eyes just like this and it just like this and from that moment he goes from behind him and pulls out an axe and then begins to go after my friend who was a female and she's running and he goes after her and begins to chop up her body and 
me and the other one, the other guy that was there began to run and we hid under a slide and we watched the terror of how this boy began to chop up her body. And we knew, we looked at each other and we knew he was possessed. He was possessed and we had to get out of there or we were next. And sure enough, when we said that, he turned around and began to say, come out. And we found a way where we began to run out of the park and um, I was running and we were running for our life. And and this, this kid, he was just possessed. The, the look in his eye, there was no one there. And so we ran and I, I, I ran, but it was that moment of the, the moment of seeing what was happening that began to palpitate my heart to where I said, I got to wake up because it was, it was just horror. It was horror. And so as I ran in the dream, I got to a place where I stopped and I just forced myself physically to wake up. So I woke up and I waited for my heart to calm down but at that moment I felt the presence of darkness rise not just in my room but I felt it I just felt it I I can't explain how I felt it but I felt it and those last few days all I can think about is it as in the days of Noah and even a song came forth as in the days of Noah and and I'm saying I'm like God um People don't know what the days of Noah looked like. And when you start reading and looking at the culture, it was a very wicked, wicked, wicked time. And the Bible says that we will come into a time where we'll be so wicked. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit more about this, okay? Because I know a lot of people do not do research. I am a researcher, okay? Which means I seek things out. I like to find the pieces and put them together. Um, Just one of my grace. I just do that because I like full information and not in part. And yeah, we get parts from other pieces of the body, but as well as a general piece. Um, can be found because the Lord says, you seek, you'll find it. And so, and it also says in Jeremiah 33, he longs to give us the mysteries and, and tell us things that you no know, one wants to hear or even has the mind capacity to, to, to say, could it be? And so that's part of being a friend of God. You know, it's like, it's that friend that maybe you feel like you ever had a friend who you, you feel like sometimes is out there, but you know that in all sincerity, this person is not really like a cuckoo, but you know, they're like just that type of person and you embrace that. And so it's like that with God. It's like, God will tell you things and you're just like, people are not ready to hear this, God. They're not ready to hear this. Their, their minds are not even in the Genesis mandate, which they don't know their authority. They don't even know their dominion. We've been playing church for so long that we've lost the authority that was restored on the cross. And so, and that's a whole nother topic in itself. I mean, we've lost the, the thought that we could even possibly be used by God to change, not just a nation, but a city. You know, if we can see lives change around actually human beings, then why wouldn't you think that God would want to go so far beyond to use you to change a city? And so, um, and so here, here's what I'm going to tell you. A while back, I have went through and I had to make sure that I was mature enough in Christ to do this. See, I do not recommend you doing something that you're not mature enough to do, because if you're not solid in your faith, 
you can easily fall into some crazy stuff because you're just not grounded in Christ. And you'll find that out after you dabbled into some stuff that you shouldn't have because you weren't ready to comprehend it. And so I do not recommend, I say it again, for you to dabble into things if you know for a fact you're still flaky in your faith. Just laying that out there before we go forward, okay? So this was my first dream. I prayed and I asked the Lord, God, where where could this have possibly, how could this possibly happen to our youth? And he reminded me of a research I did once. And I went back to see it. And so, um, the satanic, satanic Bible, okay, it's what they call it. It's the satanic Bible. Bible. I had done some researches and found the wiles and the schemes of the enemy. And he listed, whoever wrote it, has listed in that book that this was all written out. I don't know what year they wrote it. I don't know any of that. All I know is that it was right there, the media king. And then he talks about how he would do it through video games. And video games will begin to plant seeds of these wicked things. And all these, these schemes he had placed into the media. If you look now, you cannot find the truth in media. You cannot find the truth in media. Okay? And if you look around, a lot of children are being babysat by the telephone, the phone. They're being babysat by their tablets. Their father and mother are the media, okay? They're learning things you don't teach them, which you should have been teaching them because what they learned was inappropriate through media, okay? So, uh, you know, YouTube was a really big issue because YouTube channeled everything. YouTube channeled everything. And then they made YouTube kids, which I still do not trust, okay? So this media is a part of his scheme. Why I believe the Lord is restoring media. He is taking back and influencing more light because the darkness has taken so much. I want to show you something, okay? I'm just going to... I'm just going to pick little uh, tibbets, tibbets to kind of help you out here. That's just dream one. We're just going to talk about dream one today. I want to funnel dream two, but I want to do it in a different, uh, in a different um, stream because it's a different, something different happened there. And I think it has something to relate to this um, COVID Okay, and I'm starting to see more and more things coming out of this COVID about the schemes of the enemy and what they're trying to do. I don't trust Bill Gates as far as you can throw him. Just saying, I just, I don't know. I just don't, there's something just always been fishy. Why? Because he is all of a sudden, you know, but we're not going to get into that because, and then I just get off and we'll end up telling the dream. Anyway, so here's your tidbits. Okay, let's see here. Media. I'm going to punch in media filters. Okay, let's see. Here it talks about humility is no longer willing to wait for an afterlife that promises to reward the clean and pure. There is a mood of neo-paganism that has been emerged in, in a variety of brilliant individuals. Doctors, lawyers, engineers, teachers, writers, stockbrokers, real estate developers, actors, actresses, mass media communication people. To cite a few of my categories of Satanists who are interested in formalizing and perpetuating all pre-rating religion and the way of life. So right here, there's an indication stating that I have sent out, he he calls it a drab spirit. 
that issues out paganism, neo-paganism, and he's sending out doctors, lawyers, engineers, teachers, writers, stockbrokers. They're all in on this ma and mass media connection people, which will begin, which will begin to do his work. Okay. Let's go to the next one. And what I, what I saw here, let me just go up a little bit. I want to show you something. I'm not going to give you so many things. Okay. There is nine satanic, 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 whatever. I have an accent that I feel like the older it gets getting bad. Satanic statements. Okay. Here's one. Satan has been the best friend the church has ever had as he has kept it in business all these years. That's one statement. Satan represents all of the so-called sins as they are led to physical, mental, and emotional gratification. Satan represents man as just another animal, sometimes better, more often worse than those that walk on all fours, who because of his divine, spiritual, and intellectual development has become the most, vi vi like, the most vicious animal of all. Ah, look at this. Saying represents responsibility in the responsible instead of concern for the psychic vampires. Saying represents vengeance. So, okay, so here's a statement. Now, I'm not trying to glorify Satan. But I tell you what, to be a watchman on the wall, you have to know when there's schemes of the enemy being presented. And then you have to sound the alarm and say, hey, check that, pray on that, ask God for strategy on that because it doesn't seem right. Something doesn't, doesn't seem connected. As a, a soldier of Christ, as a soldier of Christ, we are to be on the lookout so that we can protect the church and the sheep, or should I say the sheep of the church. Look at this. I want to show you something that I saw the other day. Listen, we're sleeping. We're sleeping and everybody's like, oh, but let's just, you know, let's glorify Christ. And that's all great. But we got to take down certain things that are being done in the body of Christ so that we can have the pureness of the body because they don't know the schemes or the wiles of the enemy. So you don't know when you're being deceived. Can I tell you why we don't know why deception isn't in the room? Because we don't have the discernment anymore. We've lost our discernment. And when you lose your discernment, you cannot sniff out anything anymore. So look at this. I don't know why I didn't bring it up the first time. So listen to this. Now, I'm not telling you that the media is of the devil. What I'm telling you is that this is his primary use. And because of that, our children are being babysat by media, which is taking over their mind, which is... He is utilizing, or should I say the spirit is utilizing to plant wicked seeds in the mind. And so when there is no spirit of Christ in a child, the vessel is empty and ready to be occupied. See, I don't understand why we're surprised when we hear about children taking their life. I don't understand how we're surprised when we hear children cutting up their parents. I don't understand that. And do you know that those are the majority of, the, of those stories you're not hearing as much because they don't want you to know the wiles of the enemy. But if you look for it, you'll find it. Because media's job is to get um, information. Whether it's true or false, they don't care. They got to get paid. In 2 Timothy... It talks about being a good soldier for Christ. What I liked, what, what stood out to me was 
Let's see if I find it. Okay, right here. You therefore must endure hardship, a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him with please him who enlisted him as a soldier. It says we don't entangle ourselves with the affairs of this life. But look at this. Ephesians chapter 6, 11. So what do we entangle ourselves with? Look at this. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Use the armor and weaponry that God provides so that you will be able to stand against the de deception tactics of the adversity. For we are not struggling against human beings, but against the rulers, authorities, and the principalities governing this darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So, going back, there has been a laid out foundation for the wicked. They have their own Bible that they... Uh, that they they are following, and it's it's contrary to the word of God. Um, look at this: love one another. It has been made been said is the supreme law, but what power made it so? Upon that rational authority does the gospel of love rest? Why should I not hate my enemies if I love them? Does that not place me at their mercy? What a way to think! Oh my gosh. What a way to think. This is the thought actions of this, this, this man-made thinking. Does that not put me at their mercy? Wow. Uh, it's natural for enemies to do good unto each other. So what is good? Hate your enemies with all your heart. And if a man smit you, I want you to smash him on the other. Smit him, smit him, hip. Fly, for self-preservation is the highest law. He who turns the other cheek is a cowardly dog. Give blow for blow, scorn for, for scorn, doom for doom. Compound interest liberally, add it onto them as an eye for an eye, a two for a tooth. A fourfold, a hundredfold, make yourself a terror of your adversity. And when he goes his way, he will possess much additional wisdom. Look at what he tells him. After you're done tearing this person apart, you're walking away with this wisdom that you shall make yourself respected in all walks of life and your spirit, your immortal spirit shall live not entangled in paradise, but in the brains and the sins of those who respect you have gained. Wow. Are we serious? Absolutely. 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 They are very serious of how wicked, how Satan is very serious about how wicked he's going to be. It says in Isaiah 60, it's going to be the darkest times we've ever seen as, as well to encourage us that it will be the brightest times you'll ever see. But you're going to see some darkness. You're going to see some darkness. That's why we have to be founded in our word. We have to be founded on solid rock, solid rock. So that, because there's going to be, the darkness is going to be full of fear and we got to cast off fear. What's happening now? Oh, this pandemic is set off the only fear into this nation. <laughs> Do you understand? That this was all a part of the wiles and scheme of the enemy? Hello? They're saying that this virus was man-made. Obviously, because God does not have any corruption in him. He doesn't have sin found in him. Any, any even Not even a disease is found in him. So whatever is coming that is not good, we know where it's coming from. He's using these type of professionals to lay out ground. And so therefore, here it is. We are now have been exposed with fear and not faith. I mean, we are going to have to have massive deliverances after this. 
when I tell you deliverance, it's going to be deliverance. Because there's no way in the world that we will be able to be in be able to see what's going to happen if we're here and not feel like you won't you're gonna see the terror. I mean, why? Because it's 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 laid out. You have people that you do not know. You could be sitting in front of your doctor, talking to him about, you know, your condition. And you don't even know that he could be practicing Satanism. It says it here. I have professionals out there and they're laying ground. They're doing the work behind the scenes. No one knows what I'm doing. And I'm going to tell you why no one knows. Because no one is on the watch. So when you're not on watch and you're not praying, there's a perfect time. To plant seeds. I don't know if you saw my other dream. I had another dream. And in my dream, it was about uh, the, the seed planters, which are actually found in Matthew. It says the enemy came at night and planted seeds that were not of the wheat. They were of weeds. So I was on my bed and on my bed, I felt there was like a presence on my right hand side and I couldn't see it physically. So I turned around, put a veil over my eyes, and I could see into the spirit. And I saw these ugly things that, let me tell you, I did not want them to know I can see them. There was a little one and a big one. And he came, and he was planting seeds in my head. In my head. Do you know Ephesians chapter 6, 11 talks about keeping on the armor of God? When was the last time anybody ever spoke about the armor of God? I can tell you right now that I know for a fact a lot of people stop putting on the full the full armor of God. I didn't say just put on your helmet today and then tomorrow you'll wear your belt. No, it's a full outfit. It's your uniform that has to be on every day. Every day. Every day this armor has to be put on. Guarding yourself. Girding your lions, putting on the, the, the plate of righteousness, putting, you know, holding your shield of faith. I'm telling you that we have put down the armor of God. And this is the reason why we've been off guard with the schemes of the enemy. Okay. Ephesians, maybe we need to go back and start studying that again and get our hearts ignited to actually be the good soldier for Jesus Christ. You know what happens when a soldier is in the midst of civilians? What is their job? To protect, to watch that there's no scheming of the enemy amongst the people. And even the people are not allowed to even distract us. You have to move it along. You can't, you cannot come and ask me a question. You have to move it along. So why? Because a soldier is focused on the one who enlisted him. I have to make sure to do my job because there's one above me that placed me in this position. And so therefore the civilians know you're not allowed to talk to the soldiers because it's an intense time of war and I have to be on the lookout and one ask question can take me off of a scheme that I could possibly miss. So therefore their eyes are set on flint and their eyes are watching like an eagle. And if they find one scheme, they report it silently. As silently as they report it, the others are going after it. And then the next thing you know, they have conquered a scheme scheme of the enemy. What do you think this would be for us spiritually? This would be our prayer. This would be me saying, I see it, Lord. Now let's bring it down because we don't fight in the natural. And you know, it's something that's a lot bigger than we grab. We gather more people, more soldiers to gather together and bring it down. How do you know that that is our strategy? Daniel. Daniel, the book of Daniel, when he says, I asked the Lord and I did not receive an answer. And so therefore I continued to press in for 21 days. What was happening in those 21 days as Daniel was pressing in, there was a war in the heavens. And the angel said, I had to fight back the principalities of the air just to get to you because the Lord already had answered you on day one. But there was such a warfare to that answer. Listen, there was such a warfare to that answer that it took me 21 days to fight. 21 days of fighting before I can deliver this. 
wow, we have lost the supernatural. We have lost the supernatural. We have become so humanistic that we have lost sight of the spirit of God. And so our prayers hit the target. <laughs> our prayers hit the target. And here we are looking looking at Look at this. Blessed are the strong, for they shall possess the earth. Cursed are the weak, for they shall inherit the yoke. <laughs> Hello? Like, I'm not even going to continue because it's so... Re it's, it's, it's laid out for people to be wicked. And we are supposed to be the people of light. Where we shed the light of Christ abroad. And we have fallen asleep to a state where where we've allowed Satan into our homes, into the lives of our children, where we had authority to take over, to take dominion over it, we just left it. And we let him have his way. And we then we pray for God to help us. Wow. So I think that we need to repent for taking off the armor of God, for allowing Satan into our lives and, and, and babysit our children, for coming off guard, off duty with our kids, and then asking the Lord for something that we already had the key to. You ever wonder why sometimes you feel like your prayers aren't being answered? Have you ever thought that maybe it's because you already had the answer? You already hold the answer. Jesus Christ paid it on the cross. And when he said it was finished, guess what he said it was finished to? He said it was finished and there was a restoration in the garden that took us back to Genesis. What, is it, what do I mean by it took us back to Genesis? It took us back to where we get, were given our authority, our dominion, where we had identity, where we knew who we were in Christ. And we began to do what he said, multiply, take dominion. And so we have not picked up that mandate. Some have and some haven't. So... It's, I don't, I, I don't want to get too far in and then release something that I'm still putting together, but I, I, I know that God is doing a, he wants to reform, but he needs to awaken and we're not, the awakening is here. And right now, the Lord is awakening the inner man to the true identity, the original intent. And when we grab a hold of that, the reformation will begin. So this dream, and I'm going to end with this, this dream revealed to me how the household of America have left their children attended by the wiles and schemes of the enemy. They've been babysat by our tablets, our, our phones. And I just read to you a piece of the satanic Bible, as they say, where it says he is king of media. He had this strategy. He says the, the parents would be too busy to take care of their kids. And that will be the time that I will enter in and take hold of them through the mass media. I will be mass media king. He even aligned, what did I say? Professionals, doctors, nurses. You got mass media, uh, mass media, uh, mass communication media professionalists that now we can see has taken over the media with massive amount of lies. And so... It's time to clean up. 
It's time to repent and get back to putting on the armor of God and standing on your duty and begin to pray and do the assignments that the Lord has asked of you. Do the assignments that the Lord has asked of you. Partial obedience is non-existent. Partial obedience is still disobedience. If you did your part, uh, assignment, you started and didn't finish it, disobedience. What are you lacking? Discipline. Disciple means discipline. You're disciplined in Christ. It says, therefore stand and have the belt of truth buckled around your waist and put on your righteous, righteousness for a belt, a breastplate. One second. Because I think... I thought it was a delivery. Um, the truth buckled around your waist, put on the righteous righteousness for your breastplate, the feet that is readiness that comes from God's, from the good news of peace, the helmet of deliverance, the helmet of deliverance, along with the sword given by the spirit that is the word of God as you pray at all times. Not sometimes, pray all times. If you are fighting to pray and there's an issue with you when you're praying, that you need to get delivered. Because prayer is our only connection to understanding the things that we do not, do not understand. Okay? And we have to be praying. And it says that the sword given by the spirit, that this is the word of God. As you pray all times and all kinds of prayer requests, all kinds of prayer requests. Can I tell you something? Okay. I'm going to show you this. Okay. All prayers of the Bible. You can learn all prayers that were set off in the Bible. See, you don't know because you don't search. If you know this, then amen. You are searching things out. But if you don't know this, it's because you're not going in depth. You're not going into the deep of God. So every book in the Bible has a prayer. It has a prayer. Except we can't find one in Leviticus. But every other one has a prayer. And I can go through them and I can see all different types of prayers that were prayed. And it will give you wisdom. Wisdom to reestablish your discernment again with the Lord. We need discernment. God, we need discernment. It says, with all kinds of prayers and requests in the spirit, vigilantly and persistently for all God's people. And then pray for me too. When was the last time you were praying? And I just said that to, to Javon the other day. I said, when was the last time people, people were praying and fasting for their leaders? So that they might not fall. Because if you get up, you get caught. In a blind leader, then you too will be led blind. So why would we want that to happen? When was the last time anyone fasted and prayed for their leaders? Hey, we have issues with our government system. When was the last time we fasted and prayed for them? So there is a lot of crookedness that God is straightening up and making it upright. And I think this is the best time to allow him to do this with us. If you've taken off your armor of God, you have been open to every scheme of the enemy. Your children too. The dream that I had where the children were instantaneously, in like just in an instant, they were being possessed and started doing, cutting up body parts, is was God revealing that we've been off guard as our, our uh, parental authority as the watchman in their life. And we've allowed the schemes of the tablets and the media to take over and plant wicked seeds. Then we wonder why there's rebellion found in them. Rebellion is not found in them because of the sins. Rebellion is found in them because of what they're putting in here and then it's going in here. Because the Bible makes it really clear that those who have been saved says, it says that the children have also been sanctified. Those who have been sanctified as also their children have been sanctified and been made holy. So 
that's just dream one. And if you didn't catch it, I advise that you go back and listen to it because we do not know the wiles of the enemy. And because we are not in the knowing, guess what? The Bible says you, what does it say? You perish, you perish for the lack of not knowing. That's why people are perishing because they do not know and they choose not to know anything. They just think that God's supposed to do everything, but that is not the original mandate. The original mandate was given to us in Genesis and it says, I've given you authority on the earth to take dominion and multiply it. We're missing that part. And when you understand that, then you will see you will see a book of Acts, you know, continuation happening. We have to teach our children how to war and not how to be children of coloring books. Look at what we're just, look at our discipleship. We have our children going through this by this woman. You know who this is? Tony Evans' daughter. She lays it out. Like if they were adults, we don't have time to play around here. I want to equip Ephesian children that know the time and their seasons, that know to war and how to pray. When I say war, because they know how to pray and they know how to dismantle things. I want to see the children at the age of 12 getting on podcasts and I want to see them send out, talk about deliverance. This, if you're going through this, it's time to be delivered. Come on. We need a younger generation so engrafted, empowered by the Holy Spirit that I need them empowered by media and the nonsense and the schemes of the enemy. We need to um, disciple our children to a place where they're going to impact other children and that there be no nonsense. Right now, they're, uh, they're in a spirit called idleness. That spirit of idleness comes and it's like a sloth in your house. All they want to do is eat and play. But you have to take authority over this thing. And you have, why? Because a lot of our parents work, but, and then that, okay, I get it. We worked and all that working, but you have to remember at the end of the day, you could easily be fired from your job. And all those hours you put in, may, and all the time you lost in your children, was it worth it? If you believe in God, then you should believe in the favor of God. And if you have favor with God, you would have favor with men. And that's what the word says. And so therefore put God first and not your job. And you will see the favor you will have in your job. I'm telling you, this is not things I'm preaching because I did not see it. I've seen God's favor. And I know many of you have. We need to go back to the truth. So we need to disciple our youth. And this, you don't have to disciple them with baby stuff. The world already exposed them to too many things. Our school system already exposed them to too many things that only adults should know. So where's their innocence? There's still a tab, some left that we can, we can till the soil, till the soil and start taking out the bad things and just till the soil and show them what is right, what is true. And right now we're working on so, you know, we're working on the righteousness. So we're working on the breastplate. And I do pop quizzes. I want to make sure that what they're learning is being retained. This is how we do it. Just like adults. I do the same thing to adults. I don't want people teaching people where they're just reading along or, or you know, and then you're looking at them and, and, and some people like to write. I get it. Maybe that's their learning. But if you're going to write, I hope you're retaining. So when I come back, I'm pop quizzing. Did you? And I ask, you know, also those little pop quiz will tell me what they're still lacking in. And we'll go back and teach that. So it's, it's a time to get into the solidness and the Bible and the truth of foundations, not just to know the scripture, but to know the depth of the scripture. And I want the, the kids, I'm, they're my, they are literally becoming my like project because I want them. I got this whole thing called faith in action and they're, a, they're an Ephesian four children. And God gave me all these things to write down. 
if the media is going to be something that's going to play out in the children's life, then I need to rise up some children that will take this thing down. I want them to be praying with a, with a, with anointing that's going to break the yoke over these children. I'm telling you, it is time. I think we've done so much focusing on our adult life with all our circumstances and situations, how imperfect we are and how many things we need to get deliverance from that we have stopped focusing on the next generation. And we've done too much of me and not enough of them. It is time. Jeremiah Johnson preached one day about the upper room moms. It's time for an upper room encounter with our children. I, I'm, I'm believing it. I'm believing it. I felt yesterday there was a shift and I'm going to run with that shift. I think they're ready and open and hungry to know the truth. And I can't tell you, like our kids here, they're, they're hungry for those things. They love that stuff. When I talk about Ephesians and, and they're like, wow. And then when we, we, we get a little bit more in depth and then I got this whole a binder that I put together and I get to explain to them what's operating behind certain conditions and, and, and how can we pray to kind of break that off and they have to understand, you know, my son even said like, I'd rather go, I'm going to fast. Who, who says that? What child says, I'll fast. If you find me, then I need more of them. Come call me and we will gather them up for a time of fasting. So, I'm excited for what God is raising up. And it's an invitation to be raised up. At the same time, I know it's a serious time for us to get our hearts soaked into the solid truth that anything that's come in uh, through, through, through just crooked teachings God, just purge it out, purge it out because it's hindering our fullness in Christ. Hyper grace, uh, um, you know, revelations, uh, reading revelations the other day when I was going through the churches and they were saying, you know, I, you, I love that you did this, but this, I love that you did this, but this, and we were going through that. And I wanted them to underline everything is said. You did great, but you lack this. If you would just do this, then, you know, this would happen. So Jesus didn't just say, you know, I'm not giving you a chance to repent. There's a chance to repent. But um, my point of that was I was going through Revelations and I saw something there about a, a church that was teaching the teachings of Balaam. And, and it would be like ba Balaam, Balaam. But when they were teaching that, I had to look that up. I'm like, what kind of teaching is that? And it was in the church. I looked it up, found it, boom. I could identify it right away when I saw what it all entitled. I said, wow, wow. So we need to clean up. We need to clean up. We need to get to our word and we need to raise up some fiery generations that will be around their generation that will identify things and pray for them. And pray for them and, and deli have deliverance with them. Oh, come on, come on. I, I can't, I can see it. I can see it. And so, this is what we're working on. Maybe you want to get it for your children. It's called the Armor of God. And it's from Priscilla, which is Tony Evans' daughter. Um, listen, <laughs> this is so good that the adults are like, I think I need this. Okay, the adults. And what I love here, I'm going to show you something. I don't know. I just feel like I should do. It has a prayer strategies and it has these cards that we need to get them to understand how to pray. The strategies, what it means to be, what strategies mean. Then guess what? Here's the best part. Look at what it says. Inheritance and my identity in Christ. Come on. Inheritance and my identity in Christ. I mean... All this is so great that I, I just, I get into it and I start thinking, what do, what would it look like if we had, you know, uh, let's say eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds, knowing their true identity in Christ and their inheritance. Ah, the inheritance. They don't know their inheritance. 
I'm going to stop there. I feel like I just need to stop there. And so, let's pray. Father, we just thank you. Papa, we thank you. Oh, my goodness. We just thank you for such a good father you are. You're such a good father. You are a good father. There's no other. I can't ask for a better dad. You are the best of the best. And Lord, I just thank you that you don't leave us in the dark. You don't keep secrets. You don't, you don't keep anything from us. If we're willing to know and ask God, you reveal it. And Lord, I just ask that our prayer life would come into another level this season of understanding of our prayers. That our prayers are not just a simple, you know, prayer, but God, that you want us to pray prayers that are dismantle the works of the wicked. And I thank you for that, God, for that anointing that you're going to place on many people. I see a lot of mothers that are going to be hit with the spirit of intercession that is going to pray prayers that they don't even know, that they don't even know. They're just going to flow out of your mouth. And the Lord's going to place a fire, a fire of wisdom and understanding over here. I see women praying. I see the fire of God above them. And they won't know what hit them. And when you thought that all was dead, all of a sudden, you have more life than you had in any other season. And you would be on fire for the Lord. And you would train and teach other children in the next generation. And, and oh no, God is not holding anything back. God is not holding anything back. He's not holding anything back. He's giving us everything. Everything because it was finished at the cross. Everything that was ever, ever taken it has been restored years, years, years ago. And so the Lord, right now I can see it, that the Lord is just placing mantles that, it looks like generational mantles, like mantles that our family line had that was never fulfilled and we will finish the assignments of our of our line. Yeah, I see that. So therefore, God, I just thank you for that anointing right now, God. That anointing you're placing on people to finish the work. To finish the work that was not completed. Because those schemes and the wiles of the enemy came. And it just hindered. It hindered the assignments of our people. And so, Lord, I just thank you, God, that we have the opportunity to do that right now. Stand up as a soldier for Christ. Keep our face flint. Lord, help us to put the armor, your armor, God, back on. That we would walk in the knowing of who we are in our inheritance and dismantling the works of the enemy. And the lives of people, God, because it was finished. It was finished. These are all lies. And so, Lord, we just thank you, God, for that opportunity, God, to, to rise up. And, Lord, I ask for discernment over all of us. We ask for wisdom. And, God, I ask for the reestablishment of the fear of the Lord once again upon all our, all our lives as well as our nation. And so, Lord, I just thank you right now in Jesus' name. I hope this blessed you. I hope this helps you. And may the Lord keep you. And I will release the other videos soon. Let me just finish the rest of the pieces. Amen.